Miss England's class. Um, today we are going to read one chapter of the BFG. It's called The Plan. This is when Sophie and the Big Family Giant and the Queen all get together and make a plan as to how to get rid of the giants. Those awful man-eating giants. So for today's chapter, you're going to need to know two different words. Those words are Atlas. the first one. First one is Atlas. An atlas is a book of maps. So it's a whole bunch of maps in one book. The next word you've probably heard before. The word is pinpoint. So if you pinpoint something you find exactly where it is. So if I had a map of the United States and I pointed to exactly where Salt Lake City was and I said we are here I would pinpoint on a map. If I had a map of Utah, like this, I guess you guys can't really see that, huh? Like that, I would say, we are right there. Okay? I would pinpoint exactly where we are. So, atlas and pinpoint. Okay, grab your BFG books. On my copy, it is page, let's find it, 176. Um, but you, if you've got a different copy, that's fine, or if you're just listening. Um, the plan. The head of the army and the head of the air force stood at attention beside the queen's breakfast table. Sophie was still in her seat, and the BFG was still high up on his crazy perch. It took the queen only five minutes to explain the situation to the military men. I knew there was something going on, like this going on, your majesty, the head of the army said. For the last ten years, we have been getting reports from nearly every country in the world about people disappearing mysteriously in the night. We had only one other day, we had one only the other day from Panama. Or the Hattie Taste, cried the BFG. And one from Wellington in New Zealand, said the head of the army. Or the booty flavor, cried the BFG. What is he talking about, said the head of the Air Force. Work it out for yourself. The queen said, what time is it? 10 a.m.? In eight hours, those nine bloodthirsty brutes will be galloping off to gobble up another couple of dozen unfortunate wretches. They have to be stopped. We must act fast. We'll bomb the blighters, shouted the head of the Air Force. We'll mow them down with machine guns, cried the head of the army. I don't approve of murder, the queen said. But they are murderers themselves, cried the head of the, air, of the army. That is no reason why we should follow their example, the queen said. Two wrongs don't make a right, and two rights don't make a left, cried the BFG. We must bring them back alive, the queen said. How, the two military men said together, they are all 50 feet high. They'd knock us down like nine pins. Wait, cried the BFG. Hold your horse flies. Keep your skirts on. I think I have the answer to the maiden's hair. Let him speak, the queen said. Every afternoon, the BFG said, all these giants is in the lands of naughty. I can't understand a word this feller says, the head of the army snapped. Why doesn't he speak clearly? He means the land of Nod, Sophie said. It's pretty obvious. Exactly, cried the BFG. Every afternoon, all these nine giants is lying on the ground, snozzling away in a very deep sleep. 
they is always resting left up before they is galloping off to guzzle another helping of human beings. Go on, they said. So what? So what you soldiers has to do is to creep up to the giants while they is still in the land of Naughty and tie their arms and legs with mighty ropes and wonky chains. Brilliant, the queen said. That is all very well, said the head of the army, but how do we get the brutes back here? We can't load 50-foot giants onto trucks. Shoot them on the spot, that's what I say. The BFG looked down from his lofty perch and said, this time to the head of the Air Force, you is having belly poppers, is you not? Is he being rude? The head of the Air Force said. He means helicopters, Sophie told him. Then why doesn't he say so? Of course, we have helicopters. Watch the big belly poppers? asked the BFG. Very big ones, the head of the Air Force said proudly, but no helicopter is big enough to get a giant like that inside it. You do not put him inside, the BFG said. You sling him underneath the belly of your belly popper and carry him like a portito. Like a what? said the head of the Air Force. Like a torpedo, Sophie said. Could you do that, Air Marshal? The Queen asked. Well, I suppose we could, the head of the Air Force admitted grudgingly. Plus, it's really hard to read really loud enough that it catches it on the microphone, so that's why I keep yawning. I'm not even tired, but I'm yawning because I have to talk so loud that I don't have enough breath, and then my brain thinks I need more breath. So thank you for being so patient with me. If I end up yawning a little bit. Anyway, where were we? Um, well, I suppose we could, the head of the Air Force said grudgingly. Then get cracking, the Queen said. You'll need nine helicopters, one for each giant. Where is this place, the Air Force man said to the BFG. I presume you can pinpoint it on the map. Pinpoint, said the BFG. I is never hearing these words before. Is this Air Force being talking slunge buggle? The Air Marshal's face turned the color of a ripe plum. He was not used to being told he was talking slush bungle. The Queen, with her usual admirable tact and good sense, came to the rescue. BFG, she said, can you tell us more or less where the giant country is? No, Magister, the BFG said. Not on my Nelly. Then we're jiggered, cried the Army General. This is ridiculous, cried the Air Marshal. You must not be giving up so easy. The BFG said calmly, The first hitchy bobstickle you meet and you begin shouting, you is bit twiggled. The Army General was no more used to being insulted than the Air Marshal. His face began to swell with fury and his cheeks blew out until they looked like two huge ripe tomatoes. Your Majesty, he cried, we are dealing with a lunatic. I want nothing more to do with this ridiculous operation. The Queen, who was used to the tantrums of her senior officials, ignored him completely. BFG, she said, would you please tell these rather dim-witted characters exactly what to do? A pleasure, Majesty, cried the, said the BFG. Now listen to me carefully, you two boot bogglers. The military men began to twitch, but they stayed put. I is not having the foggiest idea where giant country is in the world, the BFG said, but I is always able to gallop. I is galloping forthward and backward from giant country every night to blow my dreams into the little chiddler's face. I is knowing the way very well. So all you is having to do is this. Put your nine big belly hoppers up in the air and let them follow me as I galloping along. 
How long will the journey take? The queen asked. If we is leaving now, the BFG said, we will be arriving just as the giants is having their afternoon schnozzle. Splendid, said the queen. Then, turning to the two military men, she said, prepare to leave immediately. The head of the army, who was feeling pretty miffed by the whole business, said, That is very well, your majesty, but what are we going to do with the blighters once they've, we've got them back? Don't you worry about that, the queen told him. We'll be ready for them. Hurry up now. Off you go. If it pleases your majesty, Sophie said, I should like to ride with the BFG to keep him company. Where will you sit? asked the queen. In his ear, Sophie said. Show them, BFG. The BFG got down from his high chair. He picked Sophie up in his fingers. He swiveled his huge right ear until it was parallel with the ground. Then he placed Sophie gently inside it. The head of the army and the air force stood there goggling. The queen smiled. You really are rather a wonderful giant, she said. Magister, the BFG said, I is wishing to ask a very special thing from you. What is it? The queen said. Could I please bring back here in the belly poppers all my collection of dreams? They is taking me years and years to collect, and I is not wanting to lose them. Why, of course, the queen said. I wish you a safe The BFG had made thousands of journeys to and from giant country over the years, but he had never in his life made one quite like this, with nine huge helicopters roaring along just over his head. He had never before traveled in broad daylight either. He hadn't dared to, but this was different. Now he was doing it for the Queen of England herself, and he was frightened of nobody. As he galloped across the British Isles, with the helicopters thundering above him, people stood and gaped and wondered what on earth was going on. They had never seen the likes of it before, and they never would again. Every now and then, the pilots of the helicopters would catch a glimpse of a small girl wearing glasses crouching in the giant's right ear and waving to them. They always waved back. The pilots marveled at the giant's speed and at the way he leapt across wide rivers and over huge houses. But they hadn't seen anything yet. Be careful to hang on tight, the BFG said. We is going fast as a fizzle hook. The BFG changed into his famous top gear and all at once, he began to fly forward as though there were springs in his legs and rockets in his shoes. He went skimming over the earth like some magical um, hop, skip, and jumper with his feet hardly ever touching the ground. As usual, Sophie had to crouch low in the crevice of his ear to save herself from being swept clean away. The nine pilots in their helicopters suddenly realized they were being left behind. The giant was streaking ahead. They opened their throttles to full speed, and even then they were only just able to keep up. In the leading machine, the head of the Air Force was sitting beside the pilot. He had a world atlas, so book of maps on his knees, and he kept staring first at the atlas, then at the ground below, trying to figure out where they were going. Frantically, he turned the pages of the atlas. Where the devil are we going, he cried. I haven't the foggiest idea, the pilot answered. The queen's orders were to follow the giant, and that's exactly what I'm doing. The pilot was a young Air Force officer with a bushy mustache. He was very proud of his mustache. He
He was also quite fearless and loved adventure. He thought this was a super adventure. It's fun going new places, he said. New places, shouted the head of the Air Force. What the blazes do you mean new places? This place we're flying over now isn't in the Atlas, is it? The pilot said, grinning. You're darn right it isn't in the Atlas, cried the head of the Air Force. We've flown clear off the last page. I expect that old giant knows where he's going, the young pilot said. He's leading us to disaster, cried the head of the Air Force. He was shaking with fear. In the seat behind him sat the head of the Army, who was even more terrified. You don't mean to tell me we've done, we've gone right out of the Atlas, he cried, leaning forward to look. So it looks like they've flown, or they've, the BFG is running and they're following their helicopters and they've gone clear off the maps. And they've gone clear. Um, That's exactly what I'm telling you, cried the Air Force man. Look for yourself. Here's the very last map in the whole flaming Atlas. We went off that over an hour ago. He turned the page. As in all atlases, there were two completely blank pages at the very end. So now we must be somewhere here, he said, pointing a finger on one of the blank pages. Where's here? cried the head of the army. The young pilot was still grinning broadly. He said to them, that's why they always put two blank pages at the back of the atlas. They're for new countries. You're meant to fill them in yourself. The head of the Air Force glanced down at the ground below. Just look at this godforsaken desert, he cried. All the trees are dead, and all the rocks are blue. The giant has stopped, the young pilot said. He's waving us down. The pilots throttled back the engines, and all nine helicopters landed safely I've lost my spot, class. I'm going to go back to the beginning of that paragraph. Goodness. The pilots throttled back the engines and all nine helicopters landed safely on the great yellow wasteland. Then each of them lowered a ramp from its belly. Nine jeeps, one from each helicopter, were driven down the ramps. Each jeep contained six soldiers and a vast quantity of thick rope and heavy chains. I don't see any giants, the head of the army said. The giants is all out of sight over there, the BFG told him. But you is, but if you is taking these swashbuckling, noisy belly poppers any closer, all these giants is waking up at once and then pop goes the weasel. So you want us to proceed by jeep, the head of the army said. Yes, the BFG said. But you must all be very, very hushy quiet. No roaring mode of motors, no shouting, no mucking about, no piggery jokery. The BFG, with Sophie still in his ear, trotted forward and the jeeps followed close behind. Suddenly, the most dreadful rumbling noise was heard by everyone. The head of the army went pea green in the face. Those are guns, he cried. There is a battle raging somewhere up ahead of us. Turn back, the lot of you. Let's get out of here. Pig's pickle, the BFG said. Those noises is not guns. Of course they're guns, shouted the head of the army. I'm a military man and I know a gun when I hear one. Turn back. Those is just the giants snortling in their sleep, the BFG said. I is a giant myself and I know a giant snortle when I is hearing one. Are you quite sure, the army man said anxiously. Positive, the BFG said. Proceed cautiously, the army men ordered. They all moved on. Then they saw them. Even at a distance, they were in, there were enough to scare the daylights out of the soldiers. But when they got close and saw what the giants really looked like, they began to sweat with fear. Nine, fearsome, ugly, half-naked, 50-feet-long brutes, 
lay sprawled over the ground in various grotesque attitudes of sleep, and the sounds of their snortling was indeed like gunfire in a battle. The BFG raised a hand and the jeeps all stopped. The soldiers got out. What happens if one of them wakes up? whispered the head of the army, his knees locking together from fear. If any of you is waking them up, he will gobble you down before you can say knack jife, the BFG answered, grinning hugely. Me is the only one that won't be gobbled up because the giants is never eating giants. Me and Sophie is the only safe ones because I is hiding her if that is happens. The head of the army took several paces to the rear. So did the head of the air force. They climbed rather quickly back into their jeep, ready to make a fast getaway if necessary. Go forward, men, the head of the army said. Go forward and do your duty bravely. The soldiers crept forward with their ropes and chains. All of them were trembling mightily. None dared speak a word. The BFG, with Sophie now sitting in the palm of his hand, stood nearby watching the operation. To give the soldiers their due, they were extremely courageous. There were six well-trained, efficient men working on each giant, and within ten minutes, eight out of the nine giants had been trussled up like chickens and were snortling contently. The ninth who happened to be the flesh lump eater, was causing trouble for the soldiers because he was lying with his right arm tucked underneath his enormous body. It was impossible to tie his wrists and arms together without first getting that arm out from underneath him. Very, very cautiously, the six soldiers who were working on the flesh lump eater began to pull at the huge arm, trying to release it. The flesh lump eater opened his tiny, Piggy black eyes. Which of you fool pesters is wiggling my arm? He bellowed. Is that you, you rot some man hugger? Suddenly he saw the soldiers. In a flash he was sitting up. He looked around. He saw more soldiers. With a roar he leapt to his feet. The soldiers, petrified with fear, froze where they were. They had no weapons with them. The head of the army put his jeep into reverse. Human beans, the flesh lump eater yelled. What is all you flesh blunking rot some half-baked beans doing in our country? He made a grab at a soldier and swept him up in his hand. I is having early suppers today, he shouted, holding the poor squirming soldier at arm's length and roaring with laughter. Sophie, standing on the palm of the BFG's hand, was watching horse struck. Do something, she cried. Quick, before he eats him. Put that human bean down, the BFG shouted. The flesh lump eater turned and stared at the BFG. What is you doing here with all these grotsy twiglets, he bellowed. You is making me very spishy, suspicy. The BFG made a rush at the flesh lump eater, but the colossal, 54-foot-high giant knocked, simply knocked him over with a flick of his free arm. At the same time, Sophie fell off the BFG's palm to the ground. Her mind was racing. She must do something. She must, she must. She remembered the sapphire brooch that the queen had pinned on her chest. Quickly, she undid it. The brooch is a piece of jewelry that you like put on your shirt. It's really like a pretty jewel that you like pin on your shirt. Quickly, she undid it. I is guzzling you nice and slow, the flesh lump eater said, was saying to the soldier in his hand. Then I is guzzling twin, ten or twenty more of you midgy little maggots down there. You is not getting away from me because I is galloping fifty times faster than you. Sophie ran up behind the flesh lump eater. She was holding the brooch between her fingers when she um, was right close, up close to the great naked hairy legs. She rammed the three inch long pin of the brooch as hard as she could into the flesh lump eater's right ankle. It went deep into the flesh and stayed there. The giant gave a roar of pain and jumped high in the air. He dropped the soldier and made a grab for his ankle. 
the BFG, knowing what a coward the flesh lump eater was, sought his chance. You is bitten by a snake, he shouted. I seed it biting you. You, it was a frightsome poisonous viper. It was a dreadly, dundrous, vid scream viper. Save your, our souls, bellowed the flesh lump eater. Sound the crumpets, I is bitten by a septuous, vinsome, vid screen viper. He flopped to the ground and sat there howling his head off and clutching his ankle with both hands. His fingers felt the brooch. The teeth of the deadly viper is still sticking into me, he yelled. I is feeling the teeth sticking into my ankle. The BFG saw his second chance. We must be getting those viper teeth out at once, he cried. Otherwise you is deader than a duck soup. I is helping you. The BFG knelt down beside the flesh lump eater. You must grab your anklet very tight with both hands, he ordered. That will stop the poisonous juices from the venomous viper going up your leg and into your heart. The flesh lump eater grabbed his ankle with both hands. How? Now close your eyes and griddle your teeth and look up to heaven and say your prayers while I is taking out the teeth of the venomous viper, the BFG said. The terrified flesh lump eater did exactly as he was told. The BFG signaled for some rope. A soldier rushed it, rushed it over to him. With both the flesh lump eater's hands gripping his ankle, it was a simpler, simple matter for the BFG to tie the ankles and hands together with a tight knot. I is pulling out the frightsome viper's teeth, the BFG said as he pulled the knot tight. Do it quickly, shouted the flesh lump eater, before I is pisoned to death. There he is, shouted the BFG standing up. You can look now. When the flesh lump eater saw that he was trussled up like a turkey, he gave a yell so loud that the heavens trembled. He rolled and he wriggled. He fought and he figgled. He squirmed and he squiggled. But there was not a thing he could do. Well done, you, Sophie cried. Well done, you, said the BFG, smiling down at, little, at the little girl. You is saving all of our lives. Will you please get that brooch back for me, Sophie said. It belongs to the queen. The BFG pulled the beautiful brooch out of the flesh lump eater's ankle. The flesh lump eater howled. The BFG wiped the pin and handed it back to Sophie. Curiously, None, not one, of the other eight snoring giants had woken up during the snizzle. When you is only sleeping one or two hours a day, you is sleeping extra doubly deep, the BFG explained. The head of the Army of, and the Air Force drove forward once again in their jeep. Her Majesty will be very pleased with me, the head of the Army said. I shall probably get a medal. What is the next move? Now you is all driving over to my cave to load up my bottle of dreams, the BFG said. We can't waste time with that rubbish, the army general said. It is the queen's order, Sophie said. She was now back in the, on the BFG's hand. So the nine jeeps drove across to the BFG's cave, and the great dream-loading operation began. There were 50,000 jars in all to be loaded up. Five, more than 5,000 in each jeep, and it took over an hour to finish the job. While the soldiers were loading the dreams, the BFG and Sophie disappeared over the mountains on a mysterious errand. When they came back, the, so the BFG had a sack the size of a small house slung over his shoulder. Wow, I wonder what they went to go do. What's that you've got in there? The head of the army demanded to know. Curiosity is killing the rat, the BFG said, and he turned away from the silly man. When he was sure that all his precious dreams had been safely loaded on to the jeeps, the BFG said, Now, we is driving back to the belly poppers and picking up the frightsome giants. The jeeps drove back to the helicopters. The 50,000 dreams were carried carefully, jar by jar, on to the helico helicopters. 
the soldiers climbed back on board. But the BFG and Sophie stayed on the ground. Then they all returned to where the nine giants were laying. It was a fine sight to see them, these great air machines hauling, hovering over the trussled up giants. It was an even finer sight to see the giants being woken up by the terrific thundering of the machines, the engines overhead, and the finest sight of all was to observe these nine hideous brutes squirming and twisting about on the ground like a mass of mighty snakes as they tried to free themselves from their ropes and chains. I is flush bungled, roared the flesh lump eater. I is spits wiggled, yelled the child chewer. I is swags walloped, bellowed the bone crusher. I is goose grungled, howled the man eater. I is gunzel swiped, shouted the meat dripper. I is fluck gungled, screamed the maid masher. I is slop croggled, squawked the gizzled gulpler. I is cross quinkled, howled the blood bottler. I is mop muggered, screeched the butcher boy. The nine giant carrying helicopters each chose a separate giant and hovered directly over them. Very strong steel hawsers with hooks on the end of them were lowered from the front and rear of each helicopter. The BFG quickly secured the hooks to the giant's chains, one hook near the legs and the other near the arms. Then, very slowly, the giants were winched up in the air, parallel with the ground. The giants roared and bellowed, but there was nothing they could do. The BFG, with Sophie once more resting carefully in his ear, set off at a gallop for England. The helicopters all banked around and followed after him. It was an amazing spectacle, those nine helicopters winging through the sky, each with a trussled up, 50-foot-long giant slung underneath it. These giants themselves must have found it an interesting experience. They never stopped bellowing, but their howls were drowned by the noise of the engines. When it began to get dark, the helicopters switched on powerful searchlights and trained them on the galloping giants so as to keep him in sight. They flew right through the night and arrived in England just as dawn was breaking. What do you think they're going to do with the giants? Like taking these giants and they're alive to England, isn't that kind of risky to just take them to England? They are. I wonder what they're going to do.